Hello, St. Matthews United Methodist Church, and those of you who are joining us online. I'm Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And welcome to this week's episode of uh, It's Not a Charlton Heston <laughs> Movie. I mean, uh, uh, Exodus and working through that stuff. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make Dave laugh. Mission accomplished. Stuff. <laughs> It's all stuff. Don't worry, we got a lot of jokes today <laughs> because I'm tired. That, this is caffeine, uh, and Dave is vibrant and right out of bushy tail. Um, hey, Jesus is here too. Amen. Uh, I gotta rewatch these and see how many times I've said something different while pulling the lever. I think every week I say something weird. Right? Comment down below. Uh, let us know. Well, not just when you're pulling the string either. <laughs> Dave, it's fine when I make fun of myself. It's not okay when you do. Um, no, so uh, we are we are uh, currently marching through, uh, pun intended, uh, Exodus. Uh, and this week, we did Exodus 8, 1 through 15. And your sermon was titled, dun da 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 A Hardened Heart, which, by the way, I gave Dave a really hard time about last week, and I said, oh, you're going to go there this week. Okay, cool. That'll be fun. Uh, so I sat really far away from him. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but case, yeah. In case the lightning bolts come down. <laughs> Where people started screaming and yelling. Uh, <laughs> uh, which, I, again, I'm always excited to kind of delve into the topic, but I think there's some things uh, as we kind of progress this conversation this week, uh, theologically, that are really important, and I think at times have been misunderstood mm-hmm. or mistaught. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for some more clarification. So, heart and heart, Exodus one, Exodus eight, one through fifteen. G- give us the context, Dave. <laughs> All right. So, in uh, in the eighth chapter, we're getting into the plagues, and specifically, it is the plague of frogs. So, up to this point, of course. <laughs> Uh, uh, Moses has uh, been called by God, burning bush. Uh, Moses has gone to Pharaoh, uh, s- at this point has made several trips to, to the Pharaoh, let my people go. Uh, each time has been met with uh, a, a, a negative reaction, let's just say it that way. Matches ain't sticking. Pharaoh is being being stubborn, is, is not letting you know uh, the Hebrew people go to worship God. Um, so the, the, there's been, I think, uh, frogs is the fourth plague. Yeah. Um, so we've gone through several. So uh, blood. F- uh, I gotta, I can't uh, remember. Don't, don't ask me to name them. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! Something neither one of us knows. I love it. But yes, frogs. <laughs> frogs. So, uh, the frogs, uh, come. Uh, and it's very, uh, uh, it's very graphic. If, it's very descriptive. <laughs> yes. Very descriptive in the way the <laughs> the scripture talks about how the frogs come out of the Nile and they they fill everybody's beds and their kneading bowls and their ovens and there's it, it's just I thought that was an interesting uh, illustration. Was, <laughs> they were like the ovens. I was like, that's a very specific place uh, uh-huh. to name. Well, it was the beds that really bothered me. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. So, uh, uh, so the plague of frogs is upon them, <laughs> and Pharaoh says, "Oh, Moses, make it go away. <laughs> you know, pray your prayer. I'll do whatever you want." And uh, uh, Moses says, "Okay. Well, when do you want me to have him go?" And and Pharaoh says, "Well, tomorrow, of course." Um, had it been me, I'd had enough already. I love that you made that joke because when you read that, and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." And then you said that, and I was like, "Yeah, why didn't you just say now?" <laughs> now nah, you know what the frogs need their beauty rest. Let yeah. them sleep a little let, bit longer. Let them go another day. Um, <laughs> it's such a weird sc- scripture. Is fabulous. It really is. <laughs> love it. So uh, Pharaoh says tomorrow. Moses says okay. Tomorrow he prays the prayer, and then we get more description on how the <laughs> frogs don't leave but they just die in place. <laughs> and they talk about the stink that raises from the and city. And that it stank. <laughs> I love, I, it's funny, right? You talk about scripture being fabulous. There's times in scripture where you're reading something and you're like, I didn't think that word would be in here. And it's like, <laughs> and then it stank. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's, that's what's there. Uh, so, uh, uh, so anyway, so that that happens. So the plague of frogs is over. The Pharaoh was supposed to uh, had said he would let the people leave to go worship and sacrifice to to God, um, and then Pharaoh reneges. Uh, <laughs> he says, "Nope." <laughs> he says, "Nope. Never mind. I'm not going to do it." Um, and so 
and and this is the part that I've uh, a, a big part of why I chose this particular plague, because then the scripture is very clear when it says, "Then Pharaoh hardened his heart." So he set his will mm-hmm. against God, mm-hmm. is what he's saying there. And the reason why I chose the why this passage I think is important, and and there are others, but this this says Pharaoh hardened his own heart. There are other places that go along with this, and still others that say, well, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm-hmm. And so that's really been the sticking point for me, and the the point that I wanted to make uh, in this message is right. that. You know, both are there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's listed in scriptures that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, and it's listed that Pharaoh was responsible for hardening his own heart. Mm-hmm. You know, so which is it? Mm-hmm. You know, in reading this and reading that there's both kind of uh, uh, views on this, I don't think that the author was really talking about or trying to make a point about who hardened who's heart. It, mm-hmm. I, I think they were ambivalent, maybe, and, and that's why they phrased it different ways, sure, uh, different times. Uh, but it is important um, for us to kind of talk about this, because if it was God who was hardening Pharaoh's heart, then Pharaoh didn't have uh, a choice in the matter. Autonomy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, it kind of goes against what God claims God's desire is for the people to be let free. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so if we're thinking that uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, then it's, it's giving Pharaoh no uh, uh, autonomy Mm -hmm. uh, and that God is working against God's self Mm -hmm. in, in, in what's going on. So those two things really cause a problem if they're what you hear uh, in this in this story of uh, the kind of battle of wills between God uh, through Moses to Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important that we realize that we have autonomy. We have the capability to control or or to set our own wills. Yeah, um, that we have the, the it's not God who who made me do that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it was my choice to do that, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, 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 a very important um, idea uh, that has been, you know, debated over the ages, free will or, or not, uh, <laughs> uh, within theology. And you can mm-hmm. find scriptures beyond the story of, sure. of, of Pharaoh that seem to point to us not having free will. And there's other scriptures that make it clear that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that we do, uh, and it's important yeah. that we do because then it gives us responsibility, mm-hmm. um, pure, you know, all of the responsibility for the actions that we make. Yeah, I uh, well put, Dave. Uh, again, see you next week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the, a couple observations. I think one is um, I, I love that you made the distinction of like you're not positive that this is the place the author wants us to fixate. Um, and this is something else that's wonderful about Scripture is uh, it's living, right? So there's the Spirit will will help us to understand or, or maybe pique our interest around a topic or something, and maybe that's something that at this season of life and for such a time as this, I need to fixate a little bit more on or pray through or reason through or read up on or get counsel on, and maybe that's a concept that I've I'm, God wants me to work through, and, and that's wonderful. And then there's times, too, where... It's funny how um, uh, I can get hung up on things that are not necessarily totally important mm-hmm. or the actual focus of of what themes or, or mechanisms uh, an author or the literature is trying to mm-hmm. trying to point out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in the concept, right, of when we talk about free will or not, um, I think one of the things that's really uh, tricky about Pharaoh here is... Um, so I've heard it in different camps, right? So when I say camps, I mean people groups, not clubs. So I've I've had d- fun discussions with people who do not believe, um, and this is one of the places that they that I've had in depth conversation around, uh, where well, if I don't have a choice, then what an awful god! And I'm like, if that was my perspective too, I would probably feel the same way. And conversely as well of 
you know, if God's in control of everything and does everything and possesses people and makes them do things, then what's the point, Mm -hmm. right? And I, again, I'm not trying to like completely derail us into sidetracking this. I think this is a really important part of the text you picked to to preach on, um, is that uh, I try to, normally now, I try to err on the side of uh, what questions are going to be answered here, and are they helpful for my growth and my development, and what are they challenging in me? And so for me personally, um, I think one of the things that's really difficult uh, or a theme in both of those kinds of questions that can get proposed is neither one of them promotes personal accountability. And for me, when I read scripture, and I'm overgeneralizing here, but a consistent theme I find is the wonderful gift that I think free will is. Mm-hmm. I think it might be the greatest gift God's given us, you know, besides Jesus, but is that we get to choose. And, uh, there's wonderful, fantastic, incredible consequences to being able to choose, and there's some really serious, awful, terrible consequences, which we're going to get into here in a minute. So there's some there's some level of accountability and pressure there. But so for me, like, uh, I don't really facilitate those questions anymore because I think they drive me away from what I think is actually happening here, which is Pharaoh's been offered a choice. Um, and God is like, Hey, you need to make, you need to make the right choice here. And I'm going to, you know, we'll start with something that's not so bad. And then they're going to progressively get worse until you either like choose or you break. Mm -hmm. Um, and Pharaoh, like you said, uh, digs in, which contextually here real quick. What? (laughs) Like, like we, if I'm if I'm sitting in a room and I'm well never I would never enslave a group of people but like you know if we're on plague number 4 and like there's frogs everywhere and there was blood in other plague like and then all of a sudden it's like hey if you let us go this will stop I, I right where do I sign mm-hmm. how fast can you leave it wasn't enough like get the heck out of here like I'm done and then like I I mean it's just uh and and I I'll say this, and then I'm going to kick it back to you, Dave. Uh, frogs? Like, I'm like, God's like, what should we do now? <laughs> Let's send frogs. I'm like, did you, did, was there like a wheel or like something where God was like, how can we mess with them? <laughs> like, like I, frogs, not crocodiles, not something like really scary, just something really gross and ewy. <laughs> like, 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 uh, uh, and if you haven't been around frogs, one frog is great. A couple of frogs, cool. Plague, nah. <laughs> too much, too much slime, too much gross. But I'm like, frogs? It's always the one I've gotten caught up on. I'm like, this one's like out of place. The other ones are scary or menacing, like giant hail and or, but like all this stuff. Frogs? Even locusts are worse than yeah, frogs, yeah. right? But like mm-hmm. frogs are just yuck. And then it stank. But anyway, so um <laughs> Uh, free will, not free will. Yeah. Uh, if, if we're starting to debate on where we lose accountability, I think it's very reminiscent of how do I not have responsibility here? And I don't think that's the right question to ask. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the time when Scripture was written, um, you know, that people didn't know the things about anatomy, you know, didn't have the knowledge we have today. Today we uh, know that the heart um, is a muscle that points pumps blood. Uh, it's got that, uh, there's no emotion that resides, you know, when we might talk about hearts on Valentine's day, <laughs> Valentine's uh, day is alive. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. And that our love comes from the heart. Yeah. We, we understand that that's metaphorical yes. speaking. We assign yes. that we, we know all of that's happening in our, in our brains mm-hmm. uh, well, at the time of scripture. Uh, they didn't know kind of where all of that stuff, all of that emotional kind of stuff resided. Mm-hmm. And so the heart was, uh, 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 the place where will resided. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when, when, uh, scripture's talking about the hardening of the heart, it's really talking about the hardening of the will. And I think the context is, makes that perfectly clear. Yeah. Um, without that kind of side discussion, you can get that from, from just the story, but the will of Pharaoh is set against the will of God. 
Uh, and so this whole story, you can look at it as a battle of the wills. You know, who's mm-hmm. going to get what they want and 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 what kind of machinations are, there, are each willing to go through uh, to make that, to get what they want yeah. uh, at the end. And so I really see in this, you know, this clash of wills, I, I see a lot of this kind of being relevant today. Mm-hmm. Um, just in the way that we talk about, that the way we have public discussions, debates, um, uh, the way we treat one another so often is about getting our way. It's about hardening our heart against um, whatever you know it is that the other person is, is saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this case, uh, the Pharaoh is hardening his heart against God, who is trying to free people. Uh, it's against God who is trying to to have release of the captives. Um, it's against God who's trying to benefit people as opposed to enslaving people and working them into the ground, so to speak, uh, which is Pharaoh's uh, kind of view of this. So that hardened heart, if it causes us, if it pits us against God and the things God loves, then it leads us in a direction that God doesn't want us to to, to go. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, uh, where I find a lot of relevance in, in this yeah. message today. And I, to, to I, great points, man. Um, and, and piggybacking off that, right? So leading up into this conversation, if you didn't tune in last week or the week before, go, go watch those or listen to those. Um, but we've, we've essentially been in this context in Exodus, right? Where God is, is working with people, trying to align people to what God's will is, like God's intention or heart, right? And Moses took a little bit of time, but then like was like, all right, let's go do it. And it only took Aaron. Um but Right. So so Moses' will is involved, you know, in the earlier. Right. You and know? and then and then here too, it's like, okay, so Moses is aligned, Aaron is aligned. Now it's like, okay, Pharaoh, well, if you the, align. And then the people had to be aligned. And the people had to be aligned. So there's all this cool stuff that's kind of navigating here. And and one of the things that I love about this is that Pharaoh gets multiple opportunities to repent and turn and go, okay. And, you know, not to overly humanize Pharaoh, um, but I think sometimes when we read these these parts of Scripture, right, like, you know, when we start thinking about Pharaoh and what Pharaoh does and the choices that Pharaoh makes, right, they are horrific. Like, they just get worse. And and the dehumanization of when we're talking about, like, God loves people, creation and people like Pharaoh is essentially gone. They're not people. They'd have no worth and value. Like they're, 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 uh, products or or things, right. They're not people. And so there's, uh, and Pharaoh knows better because Pharaoh has people that he treats like people. And then he's like, well, you're not real people. Well, and, and let me break in here for a moment. We're saying, um, you know, we're on God's side. Uh So we're saying things are getting worse. Um, the people who are on Pharaoh's side who didn't know God, we're probably justifying, you know, what Pharaoh was saying and saying we need, you know, and we can only imagine what they were saying. We need these slaves for the economic output of the country. We need, uh, you know, who's going to build the, the, statues if we don't have uh this huge workforce <laughs> yeah, here what do we how yeah. do we survive right you know what does our society look like in, with a change that is this big 100 percent. so all of those things you know mm-hmm. talking to humanize pharaoh um you know are the human things that were there uh justifying the treatment um that that pharaoh well, was yeah. was giving the slaves and there's this continued theme right i think throughout the entirety of scripture and it's very poignant in in Exodus, where with God, there's things that we don't think are possible that happen. And Pharaoh, again, to humanize Pharaoh, Pharaoh is like not just in charge of himself, in charge of an entire, you know, the most powerful place on the planet, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. so there's all these different concepts, and I bet you, right, there's people who are like all aligned with Pharaoh, and there's people who are just victims of his horrible leadership, so there's all these complexities and in inner workings as we kind of read through things and we unpack. And I'm and I share that because as we kind of move into a, a point later, um, when we talk about accountability and how it affects other people, like there's there's some significant things that Pharaoh and his group have to hold. Um 
But in all that, right, like Pharaoh's weighing all this too, I would assume. Um, and so one of the things that I can't stand that I've heard sometimes with scripture, especially with this story, is we do the dualistic like the sides thing, and we don't bring in like human humanness to people. So yes, hindsight, we can all go, Pharaoh, that was wrong. Shouldn't have done that. But also like, you know, it, it, there's all these other things that are happening contextually that you want to weigh as well. Um, so moving through that, right? So so we're at the point where uh, Moses and Aaron have gone to Pharaoh multiple times, told him what God wants, and Pharaoh's been like, nah. And then this time, and I don't know if a plague before this, but Pharaoh actually says, I will do that here. Which I think is significant because it's like, oh, like you're starting to understand. And then goes, you know what? The frogs are gone now. It stanks. <laughs> but we'll get through it. And so he lied. And he backs out of, which, by the way, ancient world, and I would argue I want to see a return of this here, your word and what you committed to do is a big couldn't you couldn't like say yes i will do that and if this happens i agree and then back out like a big deal but huge no no which is maybe why the plagues get worse anyway uh <laughs> so so contextually right like they've done this there's a pattern here and then pharaoh makes an intentional choice to go i'm gonna do what i think is the right thing i don't care what god your and i should make the distinction your god thinks um now let's talk about, as we bridge that into, you said something Sunday about uh, the disease of the heart that Pharaoh possesses is uh, one that we struggle with today. Expand. <laughs> Expand. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so heart, I mean, no, no, uh, this, in a medical sense today, we do have a, a big problem with cholesterol and with high blood pressure mm. and with all those things. And it comes from tacos and hamburgers and eating oh, poorly. All the good things. All the good things. All the good things. Um, and it comes from stress, which which we <sighs> are just live, put ourselves in a pressure. Stop cooker. targeting me, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of those things lead to uh, uh, coronary disease, which is literally the hardening of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so I, I talk about that uh, disease that we deal with today, which is so problematic and, and just compared it to the hardening of the heart that Pharaoh, uh, is, mm -hmm. is said to have and how it, it, it is a disease, uh, no less than a medical disease that mm -hmm. when our heart gets hardened, when our will gets set on our own way, we fail to see God's way, mm -hmm. uh, which is the better way, mm -hmm. uh, and can lead us to, uh, in, into all kind of issues. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having free will is a big deal. Um, can yes. I, you know? I mentioned, and you've mentioned here, it can it can uh, lead us to ho horrific things, and it can lead us into wonderful mm -hmm. ways of blessing other people. And it's that um, it's that difference that God gives us that uh, will. It's our responsibility how we're going to use it. Um, when when we do evil. Uh, in the world, it's all our deal. Mm -hmm. uh, when we do good, it's because we're choosing to follow God's way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so this is a this is a a, a big deal. We can't blame uh, other forces. Um, you know, sometimes in you know uh, caustic or or uh, uh, unhealthy kind of relationships, one one person can say, "Well, they did this, which made me react in this way." Mm -hmm. You know. Um, the, the, that's all. That's it really all. doesn't that's, work. That's, that's, that, 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 that doesn't fly because we have free will. Mm -hmm. We choose to react by getting angry. Mm -hmm. We choose to react by getting, I don't know, physical. We choose to react by stomping and, you know, yeah. leaving and uh, uh, all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we might say, you know, this situation made me do that, but it was our choice. Mm -hmm. We allowed ourselves to do that. Yeah. And, um, um, so when we allow ourselves to do good, um, we're learning what it means to, you know, build a place on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Um, when we choose to do ill, we, we know the harmfulness of that. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, if not, then we're getting into, you know, psychosis and, and other <laughs> things. Um, 
I, I want to, and and I love that, and and so uh, I had a I had somebody share this with me one time, um, and it and it really helped me unpack some things, and so I want to bring a distinction and a clarification here, just because I think it's important. Um, so our culture, the culture I was raised in, so I'm 36 years old. I was born in 1986 in the United States of America. And I feel like the culture that I inherited and the culture that I've grown up in, not just outside the church, but also in the church, has been one that is very heavy on accountability and like, don't mess up because if you do, consequence. Like we're, we're just really sensitive and waiting for somebody to mess up because we're obsessed with somebody getting in trouble. We want to make sure that like, as soon as you slip up, that like I, you get what you deserve. <laughs> and I'm not shirking the responsibility of accountability or free will and the consequences of having it. Right. Um, but here's the thing. One of the things I think that's really important about this, um, is that, I don't think God is like waiting for us to mess up so that God can be like, see, you did it wrong and like crush. And what did I, I think that's an interpretation that we have that's very fear based. Um, and it's very like, I don't want to say anti gospel because that's kind of harsh, but like, I think it's very like not what I think Jesus is actually after, what God's actually trying to use us to do. I think God is willing to, to try to walk through with us and to teach us and to help us understand and repent and change our ways, right? But at the same time, um, uh, we have a lens in which we've, we, we view the world and we understand things. And so one of the things I think that's—I uh, keep saying one of the things. Something that I think is really important is if you're a person, right, who— And who's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who has been through some things where your choices were taken from you or things where people made choices that were harmful with their free will— that you didn't ask for or you inherited, and so now the lens in which you view the world is a little bit more compromised. When we're talking about choices, this goes back to what this guy told me. He was like, Kelly, the reason I want you to like consider the power you have with choices is not because I want you to be terrified of doing it wrong because you're going to get in trouble, but understand that you have power and authority to make a different choice. And so this is one of the things, this is something I love about this story, is Moses was not making the right choices. And God came to him and was like, hey, there's a better way to do this. Let's go do this. And Moses finally kind of comes around. Mm -hmm. And here's Pharaoh getting presented with the same options. Hey, this is wrong. <laughs> you can't do this. The consequences of this are really, 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 really bad. There's a better way. The difference between Moses and Aaron and, and I almost said it, and Pharaoh is that they change they submit and they go, okay, God, maybe we don't know all of it, but like walk with us and teach us. And Pharaoh goes, no, I know better. Mm -hmm. And so when you're, when you're thinking about the responsibility or the accountability of the choices you get to make, understand that that's also in the grace in the context of sometimes you may not know what the right choice is. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Pharaoh is presented with an option that is clearly the right one. And he's like, nah, I'd rather kill them all. Don't do that. <laughs> like these are and, and right. And so if there's <laughs> genocide bad. <laughs> genocide yes. bad. Or in your maybe your daily context of do I repay with evil? Do, do I, I get go even? Out, do I get even? Do I go out of my way to cause harm? Because mm -hmm. I have been hurt. So now let me hurt back. Like these are the things that you're navigating and going, okay, God, what is the better way? Mm -hmm. What is the way that you would have me do this? And how do I how do I navigate this? Yeah, and so what you're talking about is aligning our will with God's will. Mm -hmm. um, not that God is forcing us in any way. It's mm -hmm. our desire. Uh, if it's our desire to align with God's will, then we're gonna we're gonna live differently. We're gonna act differently. We're gonna love differently mm -hmm. um, than than we would have otherwise. Yeah, um, which is the way <laughs> mm -hmm. that Jesus was trying to to teach us about. Yeah. And 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 here's Moses, and sorry, I inserted Jesus into Exodus, but uh, but here's Moses, where maybe Pharaoh doesn't understand that, you know? I mean, the way that we write, that Pharaoh's character is kind of written, you're kind of like, yeah, but I think you do. I think you've got some awareness that, like, this isn't totally okay. Um, but even then, right, like, 
I'm like, oh, we we have a God who's a redemptive God, and when we turn and we change, immediately there's God to to walk us through and to tell us we're loved and to and well, we're already loved, but like to to work on fixing those things, right? So when I think about Pharaoh, one of the things that's really cool about the contrast here is what if Pharaoh like repents? What happens? The most powerful nation on the planet, right? And they have they're totally resourced. What if they all live in harmony and good and like they make good on what they've done and they start like mm-hmm. repenting and fixing and loving and, and mm-hmm. taking care of and mm-hmm. and that's that's kingdom. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. And instead he goes, nah. And so uh I want to move this into this part of where again I told you not to be scared of the choices you make, but let me totally terrify you for a sec. Um one of the things that is, I think, really important about how we understand free will, and this is another thing I've inherited in my culture, is individualism. So sometimes I think things are portrayed in this bubble of like, my decisions only affect me. As long as I take care of me and I do right by me and I do what I'm supposed to do, then everything will be fine. And I go, no. <laughs> Mm-mm. Because we're communal beings, we're connected to each other. And my actions, uh, maybe not all of them, but some of them can affect other people positively or negatively. And so with Pharaoh, we talk about him being like the head of the snake (laughs) and he makes decisions and he's in charge and that's the structure and, and the power structure of that day. But then, you know, we're not there yet, but then you get through some other plagues and you talk about the Hebrew people and like how many generations of those people don't exist anymore because he killed them all off on his orders. And then the Egyptian people and what they suffer through later because the choices that Pharaoh makes, because he's got authority there. And so I think it's also important as we highlight this, when you're thinking about your level of accountability and personal responsibility with the free will that God has given you, understand that like um, it's not just about me. Uh, we can we can really help, and we can cause a lot of harm, and it's important to feel the weight of that. Because mm-hmm. um, for Pharaoh, man, like I, that's the thing that I always focus on. Maybe it's because I'm a pastor and reasons, but I'm like, man, you did so much damage, permanent, right? Mm-hmm. And what if, man, what if you mm-hmm. had just, what if you had just switched? You know, what right. if it, what if it, like. What if you were just like, oh, you know what? This was wrong. And the frogs, it, it makes sense now. You know, like, oh. And instead, like, there's people who weren't even in that room that suffer horrible consequences um, that are really, really, really severe. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, I think we want to make sure that like, no, you're not Pharaoh. I'm not Pharaoh. You're not Pharaoh. Um, but what about the places you have influence? What about the places that you can make a choice that's either good and it's aligned with the heart or the will of God, or it's the opposite. Heart disease. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, maybe not to push it too far, but if you, as we're talking about this, what I'm hoping is it's not like putting in a downward spiral of, of like sadness or whatever, but like as we're talking about this, I'm even thinking about the times that I've been wronged and harmed and I had to work through things mm-hmm. because somebody hurt me. Mm-hmm. Or where I've hurt somebody else. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. I, oh no, that's not good. (laughs) Well, and our, and our faith teaches us how to deal with those, those things. Mm -hmm. It teaches us about uh, forgiveness and repentance. Yep. You know, so, you know, this, the real sin of individualism Mm. says that we are alone um, and are only responsible for ourselves. It ignores the fact that we live in community. It ignores the fact that we are part of a King says a web of mutuality. Ooh. Um, that yeah. That says we are connected to one another, and what we do does affect our our brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and what our brother and sister does affects us. But that doesn't that doesn't uh, diminish the free will that we have. Right. You know, it teaches us, you know, where individualism causes us to simplify to the point of being unrealistic, you know, the connection of community that we live in. 
Right. Uh, the faith teaches us to understand and to realize the connection that we have, the community that we're a part of, and then teaches us how to build a, a healthy community and to be healthy individuals within that web of mutuality. Yeah. Um, and it's in this way, this is the kingdom work that, that Jesus talks about. So mm-hmm. this, I don't want anyone to hear a hopeless message in this. Right. Um, but to hear um, a realistic message about the fact that we have responsibilities, mm-hmm. uh, that we do have effects on our brothers and sisters, um, that we do kind of have live in a complex web mm-hmm. of, of connections. And when one, one strand of that web is plucked, the vibrations can be felt uh, all, over the, all over the web. Yeah, and that's the lie is that you can't make a difference. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited because mm-hmm. I'm like, no, we can, and you are. Yeah, like that's that's the thing that's so cool is like when we talk about you know back to Jesus, uh, you know sets those who Jesus sets free are free indeed. And then you and then you go and you do the work and you love well and like and it changes the world and it changes and helps people change and be loved and and have fulfillment and value in God. And then like, and then the world, like they are like, wow, this is cool. And like, and, and sometimes there's a Pharaoh and you're like, oh, this is hard. And like, that's, uh, or you, you mess up. Like there's, there's the complexities and the nuance of all that, but like, it's not meant to, to drive us towards, oh no, then I'm just accountable for my decisions. And what if I make the wrong one? And uh, I don't feel like I've made any difference up until this point in my life. So what do I do? And I go, well, Look at Moses. Mm-hmm. Talk about individualism. Moses is like, now granted, he's I think married with children at this point, so it's not, it's not like he's totally alone, but absolutely could have been like no, and stayed, and instead is like you know what no, you call me to this and and okay we'll go do it, and so I would submit that maybe <laughs> maybe you're not talking to a burning bush. <laughs> Or maybe it's not that severe. If, if you are, let me know. Please. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, you know, you. Uh, but but in that right, like what God is calling us to do, is significant and important, and and understanding the the uh, authority, or not necessarily authority, but the the sentness of having free will and using it for good, and for for purposes of God, is meant to enable and you and to and to power and to change and to do and do all this wonderful cool stuff that mm-hmm. should be exciting or, or it's meant to be exciting and and uh the individualism is to drive you to isolation and fear and scarcity and going well what change can i make and well they're not going to like it anyway and i'm like well yeah they try to kill moses hopefully you're not in places where if you say things you're going to die but you know, I I think there's a contrast there too, where mm-hmm. Moses could have just stayed put, and be like, nah, mm-hmm. uh, do, do do the don't fight with God early. By the way, like like as soon as God's like, hey, go do this, like be like, okay, let's go. Um, but feel empowered by that, not scared of the weight of the responsibility, but also uh, with a realness, understand the responsibility too, because mm-hmm. it is significant mm-hmm. and it is it's got a weight to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Well, it, it leads us all into the life that we're called that we're called into. Uh, yeah. Which which ultimately makes us us healthy, which uh, helps our community to be healthy, our our families to be healthy, mm-hmm. um, and to experience what they call the good life. Yeah. Right on. Mm-hmm. Man, I I still can't get over the scripture said stank. <laughs> uh. So hopefully all of that made sense. I think Dave was perfect. I think I rambled a lot today. I, I, I said I think. It's all good. Or here's good. the point. Or this yeah. is what this means. Yeah. Uh, um, not enough caffeine, but yeah, I love this. I and I and I hope those of you at home are listening to this. The Dave's breakdown of will and heart and free will. Uh, for a long time, these were verses I got stuck on, and I was in places where spiritually where people took choices from me and were like, nah, it's not how this works. It works this way. And it's really refreshing to hear mm-hmm. you go, nah, that, that this is, and I was like, oh, okay, that's different. I've heard that before, but, um, 
<laughs> so hopefully if you if you're wrestling with this this brings some additional clarity um and uh, and if not uh, mm-hmm. give us a shout i mean i'd love to talk about this with anybody who has any questions we can we can chat deeper uh we can we can pull up other scripture passages we can uh we can really dig into this if 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 you have that desire just give either one of us uh, a shout drop us an email we'd love to connect with you yep Man, I love this. This is so much fun. I love talking to Mike and recording it and then being like, hey, there you go. Uh, I guess uh, final thought, final thought, final thought. Um, responsibility and accountability are not meant to breed fear and isolation. They're meant to, I would argue in my life, it's driven me more to the uncomfortability of like, oh, I can't do this by myself which has helped me to lean and depend on God more to go. Oh, that's right. Not my will yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it? (laughs) Um, which is a, that's not fear. That's an appropriateness. I think of, Oh, I wasn't created to be alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what about you? Yeah. It's not, it's not fear. It's respect. It's, Mm -hmm. it's that, you know, God is called, um, a God of awe. Uh, you know, and it's that sense of awe that's getting into us mm. when we're when we're interacting with God. Um, and it's not meant to overwhelm, but it does sometimes. Um, uh, it's it's meant to bring healing. Mm. It's it's meant to bring wholeness. Um, and that's that's the way I see it, and the way of thinking that has really helped me uh, in the walk of faith, uh, in, in my walk of of life, uh, just wherever I've been. Awesome. Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we'll catch you next week for another part of Exodus. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, everybody.